Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining another session on Pilates India Experience Sharing. This uh, time we have with us Paramita Gupta, who will be sharing her two decade long experience and her, uh, her real life experience on women uh, pursuing leadership roles. Over to you, Paramita. You can share your screen and you can begin. Okay. No, I don't want to share my screen really. Uh, I, just, I thought I'll just talk, right? Um, so good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for having me in this session of uh, the Pi Ladies Conference. Uh, it's uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, so um, okay, yes, I do indeed have uh, more than two decades of experience, and um, um, I guess uh, you know I have been in many situations which have uh, required resilience and persistence uh, many many times. So yeah, I thought. Um, uh you know why not kind of uh, share that with you and discuss it with you and i'll keep it short so if you kind of want to have a conversation after that uh, we could do that because um dialogue always interests me right uh, instead of me just having a monologue from my end um great uh, so so um a little bit of an you know background about me i'm in cap germany and now uh, i'm a vice president but i've been working for 23 years after my mba I've worked in you know different um, domains and different industries. Um, I started with HSBC and then I went over to uh, Accenture for 10 years and then I've been with Capgemini for four years. And I thought that uh, though I'm not a technical, uh, you know, I'm in the IT sphere, but I am not uh, really a technical person, but I actually have a code for this afternoon, right? So my code is 131 and I'll kind of take you through what 131 essentially means. So, um, the first one of the quote really is a is a myth, right? Um, very often we hear, uh, you know, uh, so and so will tell you on how to have it all. Now the myth is you really can't have it all. Okay, you can't have it all all the time, right? So uh, and I think that's true for men and women. And when I hear women coming up to me, and I have a lot of them, uh, you know, at work, outside work, coming up and saying, "How do you have it all?" Don't put unrealistic pressure on yourself or don't have unrealistic expectations of having it all every single, you know, every single day at all the time, right? Uh, you do have to kind of um, prioritize and you have, uh, you know, you at on certain days you have the, the pleasure of probably being at home or looking after, you know, your family or doing your, pursuing your hobby. And at a, a certain other days you, uh, you know, you prioritize work. So the first, I think the first myth is, or the first advice is that don't put an unnecessary uh, pressure on yourself about, uh, you know, uh, or, the, or don't try to be super women about having it all. Yeah. And so now let's kind of move on to the, the uh, you know, the, uh, the second part of the quote, right? Uh, and that is, um, you know, my three lessons, right? So um, the three lessons essentially are, I think the first thing which I keep telling um, everybody in my team and uh, people I meet when I go for conferences, etc., that there are genuinely no shortcuts, right? I see a lot of people coming into meetings with very sloppy preparation, um, with absolutely having no idea of what they have to uh, be saying there or doing there, right? Uh, that always kind of gets my goat, right? I mean, uh, I don't... Uh, I, I personally really, really believe in hard work, right? Till this day, I don't go into any meeting without doing any research, without having a plan. And for big meetings, I always prepare, right? I mean, focus, uh, so do that. I mean, there are no shortcuts uh, to what you're doing. Uh, also focus on your brand. I'm sure you've heard a, about it a lot, right? But it is such an important thing. I think from the time that you start your career till now, right? I'm 23 years in and I'm a vice president. And even now when I have conversations with my boss, who's an executive vice president, his main thing, and you know, I talk about my next promotion, his main thing is that you need to be known for something that, you know, you uniquely bring to the table, right? And uh, that's quite a lesson for me, right? I mean, I actually uh, honestly think I'm quite multi faceted when it comes to work and I can do a whole lot of things. And I'll just give you an example, right? I started my career as a banker. And uh, after uh, seven years in HSBC, I decided to get married and move to Bangalore. And I didn't want to continue in a bank, right? I said, oh, I'll 
I'll do something new. I'll do something wonderful. And I joined a startup. I had no clue what BPO was. I had no clue what mortgage was. And I started off uh, doing that, right? Um, heading a team. And, um, you know, I won the first deal there. I got uh, quickly promoted there. Then I moved on to Accenture to do, again, a few things which I'd never done before. Then I moved on to Capgemini to do IT. And um, I'm leading a team of extremely technically brilliant people. I mean, Sukanya included. Uh, whereas I am not the technical person. So I have begun to believe that, you know, I can do anything. And maybe that is my brand. Okay. But it is important uh, to be known for something that you uniquely can bring to the table. So even after 23 years of, you know, experience, I genuinely have to narrow down. I can do anything into this is what I'm really good at. Right. And uh, this is what I need to be able to demonstrate time and again. Right. So, yeah. So there are no shortcuts and focus on your brand. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, be known for what people will come to you for. Right. What you will uniquely bring to the table and what you, you can definitely pull off with success. Now, you're doing all this to kind of rise in an organization to be to be known, um, you know, as as an achiever, to be known you know, as a credible, competent person. But sometimes, even when you do everything right, right, when you do everything right, you find yourself sometimes, I don't know if any of you have found yourself, but I have found myself in a very toxic environment at times, right? Uh, when uh, I had my second child and I came back in Accenture, um, I found my, my, my super boss, who's very, very senior in Accenture, who used to really, really like me. He was my first boss. He wanted me to be part of a particular team, right? But the gentleman heading the team did not want to me. For whatever reason, he he did not take, you know, probably kindly to me. He wasn't very keen on me joining the team. However, his boss and, you know, uh, wanted me to join the team. I joined the team. And I realized that despite the fact that, you know, I was in the right place as far as uh, the work was concerned, as far as, you know, uh, completely proving myself was concerned, my boss wasn't willing to uh, acknowledge it. And, you know, I I got into this whole mode of, oh, even if it kills me, I'm going to change his mind about me. Right? And I almost killed myself uh, and worked really long hours with the baby and um, worked through weekends. And um, on paper, he changed his mind about me. Right? There was, like, no denying that, you know, I was doing extremely well and, uh, you know, the results spoke for themselves. But then I say it was a toxic relationship. It was a toxic environment, not a relationship, toxic environment. Because um, despite my working so hard and despite my achieving everything, I still wasn't, you know, being set up for the promotion and I wasn't getting the roles that I wanted. And I think one of the things in being persistence and resilience, you know, and when Sukanya asked me to come and speak to all of you and, uh, you know, she asked me to speak about persistence and resilience, uh, I think one main important thing is that um, be persistent and be resilient, but change the context if that is not working for you, right? Uh, because if you stay in a context which is which does not recognize you, or for which I mean, even after fighting, you know, I, I see many women who just like me, ten years back, whatever, seven, eight years back. They're kind of fighting to be, um, you know, to be recognized, to be acknowledged. And that is great. And in most situations, it works, right? I mean, you put in your hard work, you invest in yourself, you invest in your team, and uh, that kind of pays off. But if it doesn't, then you should change your, con change your context. And that's exactly what I did, right? I changed my context because, you know, what happens when you don't change the context, when you stay, uh, you know, you're constantly kind of trying to get your due, Slowly, the lack of belief of, of people around you kind of gets to you and starts eroding your own self-esteem and self-worth. Uh, not a place to be in, right? That's absolutely not a place to be in. Sometimes I have seen, and I myself have been in that situation, right? I stayed in that environment for some time because I had two little children, right? I had uh, my, my family, my in-laws and my parents that don't live in Bangalore. and. Um, with my first kid, I used to travel like crazy, right? I mean, I used to be traveling from Monday to Saturday. And when uh, I just, uh, had my second child, I promised myself that I just won't do that, right? I won't be an absentee mother. 
and I wanted a, a job that uh, would afford uh, flexibility in where I work from. Not necessarily all work from home, but um, you know, it would afford the flexibility. But my main condition was that I did not want to do something that was not intellectually, celebrally challenging. And that was not uh, in the back of beyond, right? I wanted to be visible, right? I was a, I was a vice president with Accenture already. And I said, there's no way I am. I'm not the kind of person who will be happy, happy doing, you know, doing just any job, right? So I wanted a visible job. I wanted uh, something intellectually challenging. And I wanted something flexible, right? And my, my that particular role, regardless of having a non-believer boss, afforded me all those things. So, so I had my reasons for staying in a role like that. And typically, if you find yourself in such situations, right? I mean, where you're probably having to make a compromise uh, because of certain situations, right? I mean, I've, I've had a friend who uh, took on a role like that because her mother was suffering from cancer and she wanted to kind of, you know, uh, devote time to her mother. But then my advice to you is be very clear about the reason that you are in, in that environment and put a time limit to it, right? Because you should not let that go beyond a point because it, it's infinitely harmful to you in your career, right? So that is one thing. I mean, work on your, uh, uh, work on your brand, don't take shortcuts and uh, don't get trapped in an environment that doesn't work for you. The second thing, I have always seen when, you know, I have, uh, I myself have grown um, when, um, you know, when I was a lot younger, there was a lot of people who probably felt that, uh, you know, Parvita is kind of doing it at the cost of her, of her family life, right? And I've, I've realized that there's an unspoken uh, belief that it's a choice, right? It's an either or. And what I want to say that it's, it's not an either or, right? Uh, you you can uh, you know continue to uh, scale the heights that you want to with understanding and support from your family from your partner from from your organization right um, it's a question of uh, asking for the help that you need it's a question of taking on what you can chew right uh, you know it's so uh, it's been uh, realistic with uh, your situation and the work that you're doing etc. And, uh, you know, I think also it's a question of uh, being kind of flexible and uh, kind of having a strategy on a daily basis, almost, right? So when my kids were a lot younger, uh, I did not have a set priority, you know? It's uh, not that every day my work was my priority for 12 hours a day. And uh, I uh, don't be shocked, right? Um, for certain some days, my work was priority for 18 hours a day, right? I would leave at 7 o'clock in the morning and I would come back only at whatever, 10, 10 in the night, right? But there were certain days when I uh, definitely, and to this date, I uh, continue to have a priority for the day, right? And maybe priority for the afternoon. And uh, if I have to, uh, not in the corona times, but uh, if I have to, you know, go and listen to my daughter's violin concert, and if that means, uh, you know, planning a meeting, having it earlier, having it later, I will do that, right? Um, for a long time, um, I did not pursue, you know, two children, elderly parents. I did not pursue uh, what was important to me, you know, the hobbies that was important to me. Because um, the hobby that I really like, which is uh, professional stage acting, theater, uh, was going to take away a lot of time, right? So though I kept on getting... Uh, offers and requests when my kids were younger. About four years back, uh, I took it up, right? So I act with a, uh, with a team called Jagriti, who are very famous in Bangalore. And of course, I mean, given the fact that uh, my job is the way it is, uh, I don't get too much time. So usually weekends go. But you'll be interested to know that, uh, you know, I, um, I have actually managed... Um, doing uh, rehearsals even on weekdays it's a it's a question of conveying your priorities and managing them right so i told my jagriti team that i can either uh, you know wind up rehearsals by 10 in the morning it helps that they're right next to my office um or i can only come after six right now it of course means that uh, you know uh, my my family has to kind of fend for themselves without me uh, for a 
most of the days for about a month and a month and a half and they're okay with that so what i'm kind of trying, trying to tell you that don't tell yourself that your work life comes at the expense of everything and doing well at work comes at the expense of everything you'll be surprised to see how much your organization your team will support you right i mean if otherwise they see that you know you're contributing you're an honest uh, person with integrity you you work hard you can't be a slacker off and say that you know anyway i don't work and now i'm going to do theater so i won't work at all that doesn't work right Uh, but i had my entire team and my boss who's the ceo of capgemini kind of you know supporting me saying that yeah i mean do what you have to right and uh, uh, there were many days when i had i could not go in for my rehearsals uh, even right before uh, the performance was supposed to be staged because work was more important and i had to travel or i had to kind of attend to uh, attend to something important at work so what i'm saying is be flexible uh, you know plan well ahead be um, you know communicate with uh, your family your team your organ- your organization so that they know what your priorities are and how important it is for you to you know have both prof- prof- professional success and uh, personal fulfillment yeah okay um so that's important um, i think the other thing that's important is for the people in your life to be kind of on the same page as to what your aspirations are right i mean there are a lot of people a lot of women who uh, often have talked about the fact that you need to choose your husband's carefully right sheryl sandberg has said make your partner a real partner i think uh, and indra nui has talked about it but my point is it's not only about uh, you know your husband or your partner i think people in your life right so if, if you're living with your parents you're living with your in-laws they need to be on the same page as to what is important to you and uh, and most often than not you will probably get the support from them when uh, you know they are on the same page as to what is important to you and uh, will probably help you in kind of uh, realizing your ambitions right um so that's that's one thing um i think the third thing right uh, the third lesson well let's not a lesson really but the third thing i realized um uh, you know when in my journey uh, for whatever 23 years is um, that uh, to be a successful woman you know you don't have to act like a man right you don't um, you don't have to you develop your unique style right you develop your unique style and you will you'll be surprised uh, that uh, you know uh, a lot of people will value you will flock to you for your unique style right uh there have been times in hsbc when uh, you know i have been the only woman in the, the whole team right so there was a time when i was in the corporate bank and i was the only woman in all the managers and there were what about 15 16 managers i was also the youngest okay so i was 24 years old and i was the only woman and um, uh, most of the time uh, the men expected me to just uh, smile and play along with whatever uh, you know uh it was whether it was a you know coffee break which turned into a smoking break which i hated because you know i just can't tolerate passive smoking so i would call it out right um i would call out um, uh jokes and humor which i did not appreciate right which i thought was not proper at least in my presence i did not appreciate it so um, a lot of time you know there were people who were surprised saying uh i mean you you know why can't you just uh, you know smile and grin grin along which i never did and uh, that did not hurt me at all right so develop your unique style even when uh, uh, you know you are um, even in cap i think in my organization when i joined i was the only woman in the india leadership team for some time right but it does not mean that you are at a disadvantage or you are at a minority i mean you develop your own style you you are honest in your work like i told you you have already by now in 23 years you you would have uh, you would be known for what you bring to the table etc so don't act like a man uh, in order to you know climb the corporate ladder or in order to smash what you think is a glass ceiling right i think um uh the last thing that i have to say and i do want to have 10 minutes of maybe just questions and answers is um is a piece of advice right so i kind of shared a myth i shared uh, three personal lessons uh, which uh, have taught me a lot along the way 
One personal advice is that, uh, just like Sheryl Sandberg said, right? Don't leave before you leave. And I have done that, right? What do we mean by don't leave before you leave? A lot of women, right? I mean, we all, uh, not, not we all, a lot of women, they want to get married, they want to have children. Um, and so they start kind of retreating from the professional sphere even before the situation has presented itself or almost as soon as the situation presents itself, right? So uh, in her book, Lean In, she famously talks about this girl who says, how will I manage this once I have a baby? And they find out, far from being pregnant, far from being married, far from being in a relationship, I think she'd just gone on a first date and started planning her future, right? Um, when I say I have kind of done that, uh, when I joined Accenture after when my daughter was six, seven months, right? So... So it was hard. It was hard managing her. It was hard managing being one of the youngest vice presidents at that time. I felt I could not say no to anything. I had to do everything because, you know, I was always being tested, which is another thing um, I think uh, which you need to be uh, clear about. You can always say no, right, without being scared that this will go against you. Because if you're already doing a lot uh, and you already feel that, you know, you're contributing and uh, you should not stretch yourself too thin. Right, because by stretching yourself too thin, you don't do yourself a favor, and you inevitably will make mistakes, and you inevitably will drop something which will reflect poorly against you. So, if you ever feel the need to say no, please go ahead and say no. Anyway, to come back to my uh, scenario, um, twice, right? Uh, once within a year of joining Accenture, the other time six months later. I was offered partner roles that would eventually become partner roles, um, once in UK and once in US, right? Now, my husband uh, is an entrepreneur, right? I mean, he was an entrepreneur. Now, he is, his company is about 20 years, whatever, 50, yeah, 20 years old. And uh, he could not easily have moved to UK or US, like, full time. So, he would probably move only for part of the time. So do you know what I did? I mean, to this day, I think, how could I just do it? I didn't come back and discuss the proposal with my family. I'm a very supportive family, incredibly supportive husband, amazing parents and great in-laws. I didn't come and discuss it with anyone. I promptly sat there and my, my mind raced to situations in UK and US when I was uh, probably alone, my child was two years old, I had to travel, I could not manage. In my head, I put blinkers and brakes on my... Uh, you know, in my thought process and said, told my boss that, no, I can't do this. So he said, what do you mean you can't do this? You haven't even gone and spoken to your family. So I said, no, 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 I can't do this. Six months later, when it happened, I again did the same thing. And then I came and told my family that I have gone and said, I can't do this. They were aghast because it's a very, very uncharacteristic thing for me to do. I usually take opportunities with both hands and I usually never say no to work. But it was just that I left before I actually left. Right. I mean, I told myself I can't do this. The situation hadn't presented itself. Had I said yes, maybe. I mean, my husband, when he said, realized that I've said this, you know, said no to these kind of opportunities twice, he said, but we could have made it work. I mean, I could have taken on the sales part of my company instead of the operations part, like I'm doing. And, you know, my partner could have done the uh, operations part. Why did you go and say no? But I had just told myself that I can't do it. And, you know, those two, were the only two times I told myself that those are the last two times. Because I just realized when I came and told my family that they were all going to support. My my parents said that we could have traveled with you. My brother was in the US. So it, I really don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, I think um, it's worthwhile sharing that, right? And because sometimes uh, as women, we often... Um, you know, probably take on a lot on ourselves. And I have seen this from all my friends, right? And I have friends who are CEOs of companies, who are head of marketing for global banks. I have friends who are, um, you know, staying at home now because at a very early age, they told themselves that they can't do it, right? I have a friend, interestingly, who's trying to get make a comeback after 12 years. Her daughter is as old as mine. And uh, she told herself when her daughter was born that she cannot continue her career. And then I think for 12 years, she's felt, or, okay, not 12 years, but for the last eight years, she's felt that she's made a mistake and she's trying to come back. And she's doing a very good job. I mean, I think she's just got a job, which is pretty good. But 
she's kind of realizing that uh, she needn't have given up because um, you know both of us were mothers at the same time and she's seen me kind of get very frustrated get very down sometimes because i could not manage everything or sometimes maybe because i was trying really hard at work but still not getting the recognition so she's seen me she's seen me do well also she's seen me get the recognitions get promotions get good jobs so she, so she now feels that maybe she shouldn't have taken a break anyway so whatever your situation is right if you i guess you are listening to me because uh, you know the the title of the call talk is resilience and persistence and um, you know the experiences of 23 years in corporate world i'm i'm assuming that you want to probably stay on in the corporate world you want to succeed right if you do put you know don't leave before you leave don't you know remove yourself or retreat from the situation because you think a situation will present itself in future let the situation present itself in future and then you might just be amazed at how forces in the universe will you know conspire for you and not necessarily against you the way you think so i've gone on talking for most of my half an hour i actually thought i'll conclude 10 minutes before but there's still 5 or 5 minutes um so th first thank you for the opportunity uh, all of you and um it would lovely be lovely to hear from you if you have any questions or if you want to kind of share any experience um, so can you can you take questions sure audience can uh, put it in the chat if they have any okay or else uh, we also have a julep stream and okay thank you manuswini yes uh, to all those who are attending if you have any questions feel free to write in the, in the chat or else uh, you can also ask in the julep stream and uh, we uh, paramita can either will be there or we can get back to her on the questions thanks bhav bhavani i'm glad you liked it it's um yeah <laughs> okay great thanks okay so you know you'll be interested to know how i came about to being a speaker in the session right so um i was having a i was having a team meeting and uh, suddenly i kind of break into i saw a lot of young girls in the meeting and um, i I stopped talking about what I was talking, and I asked them not to just drop out of the, their jobs, right? Because I see only too many people who just uh, drop out of the jobs because they think they will have to follow their husbands. So I'll tell you one, one maybe last thing. I have two minutes, and um, you know we have a we have a group of alumni, right, from my MBA uh, college, and um, there's a senior of mine who I really admire, and she and her husband. have i think they moved continents thrice right the first time for her job the second time for his job the third time again for her job so i think they went to europe because her job, she got a great opportunity and uh, they went to us because he got a great opportunity and they moved back to india because she's got a great opportunity so so don't put uh, any uh, you know any preconceived um, definitions or expectations um, Uh, of the society or of anybody on yourself and think that this will not happen so kind of try to make things happen it uh, you'll, you'll often be surprised i'll tell you one last thing and uh, because i've got one minute and i think that uh, actually kind of was quite pivotal i told you guys as to how i did not want to have a traveling job when i had my second kid so um, you know i went on my maternity leave i had a lot of time to think about it and uh, i called up my boss when i was supposed to come back He said, "Oh, you're coming back. Great news." So I said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm coming back, but I've got some conditions." So he said, "Okay, conditions." So I said, "Yes, I've got conditions. I um, I will not be traveling for a year. I do not want to be in a client-facing role for a year because I personally find it very difficult to say no to clients. Okay, so the clients say, you know, come on a call at two o'clock at that time. When I was thirty-four years old, I would have come on the call at two o'clock also. Okay, so um, and I was regularly doing that for a year. Though I was pregnant, I was regularly doing that. So I said, I don't want to do a client call. I want to do an internal project. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to work from six to nine because I don't have domestic help. I have to look after my children. But I, I want two things. So he said, okay. 
what are those two things? And I said, I want uh, cerebrally challenging rules and I want very highly visible rules, right? And I thought he will say, Paramita, it was nice knowing you. Goodbye, right? You know what, they, what happened? It was an impossible list, right? He called me back two days later with a job that exactly fit the circumstances. I was lucky, I was fortunate. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is don't be afraid to ask. Because if you are a valued member of the team, you'll be surprised to what lengths your boss will go. You'll be surprised at what lengths I will go for some of my team members to make things happen for them. So guys, I know I'm top of the uh, hour for me. Uh, this was great, um, great for me. Jagannath, I'm glad. Yeah, don't, don't leave before you leave. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Sukanya, thank you so much for the opportunity. It was a pleasure to be here and uh, to talk. Thank you for minutes. accepting my invitation and uh, being on this topic. We all learned a lot. Thank you for this inspiring session. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye.